And we're gonna be talking today about RRSPs and the basics. And why is that important? Well, as Canadians, the best options for us are investing in RRSPs or TFSAs. So in today's video, we're gonna focus on RSPs and really understanding and explaining what it means and how it can be beneficial to you. What is an RRSP? Well, one big misconception that people have with RRSPs is that an RRSP is just a type of investment. I can put my money in an RRSP. Not knowing that an RRSP is really, um, can be many different things, okay? The best way that that was explained to me when I was younger was that an RSP is not an investment. An RSP is the type of account that you can put your investment in. And so picture this, when you're picking your investment, whether you want to put money in a GIC or purchase stocks or bonds or whatever you might want, you choose your investments and then you can put it into one of three buckets as a Canadian. Okay. You can put it in an unregistered bucket. And that means there's nothing special with that account. You have the investment, it earns income, you pay tax on that, and there's no special rules really to that, okay? Second bucket is the TFSA bucket. So you can purchase your investment and register it or put it into the TFSA bucket, okay? And the third one is the RSPs. So you have the investment and you put it into the RRSP account or the RRSP bucket for this example, okay? And so today we're gonna be focused on that RRSP bucket and what that means. RSPs, what are the benefits of it? Well, when you put invest money into an RRSP account, it is a deduction on your tax return for that year, right? So what does that mean? Well, it'll save you taxes at whatever bracket you're at. So let's maybe go through an example so we can understand, okay? So in this example, these are not right uh, actual brackets, but let's say your brackets uh, go from zero to 35,000 at 25%, 35 to 50 at 30%, and then 50, 80 at 35%. And in this example, we have someone with income of 55,000, and he decides to make an RRSP contribution of 7,000. So what kind of an effect would that have? Well, because it's at $55,000 in the bracket, starts at 50, that first $5,000 deduction that he has will save him 35%, the tax rate for that particular bracket. So 5,000 times 35 saves him 1750 or $1,750. Now, the additional $2,000 that he contributed um, now falls in the bracket just underneath that, the 30% bracket. So that next $2,000 will save him 30% or $600. So in total, $2,350, okay? And how it practically works on the return is that when you file your return, let's say you were getting a nil refund and you didn't owe anything uh, before the RSP contributions. Well, by making these contributions, you would now expect to be getting a refund from the government of $2,000. $350, okay? Conversely, if you owed $2,350 before making these RSP contributions, it would bring your balance down to zero. So you wouldn't be owing anything and you wouldn't be getting a refund, okay? And so that's how it works on, on your return. Um, another thing I should mention is that you don't, don't only have the year to make the contributions. Contributions made in the first 60 days of the following year also can be used in the prior year return, okay? So essentially contributions in January, February every year can be used against your prior year tax return. That gives you time to tax plan and see what your income is. Maybe talk to your accountant to see kind of what kind of RSP contributions you should be making based on your income for that year so that you're making the right amount and, and being as efficient as possible. The other thing I should mention is contributions do not need to be claimed on your return. So if you made a $10,000 contribution and you want to claim that first $9,000, you can decide to claim $9,000 and leave that other $1,000 to carry forward um, to next year, assuming that maybe you would be in a higher bracket next year and it might save you more. So there's a little bit of room to play around with that and that's typically where um, you know some sort of uh, tax professional that can work with you to make sure that you're being as efficient as possible with your RRSP contributions each year. Other question you might have is, how much can I contribute to an RSPs? Is there any type of limit? Yes, yes there is. And your limit is based on your income from prior years, right? So it's 18% of your prior year earned income 
is what your limit increases by on a yearly basis, and it's capped out to a certain limit per year. So right now that limit is $29,000. So if your 18% of your prior year income was more than $29,000, your limit would only increase by the $29,000. And I'm rounding it off, it's a little bit over $29,000, but it changes every year, okay? Um, and that limit doesn't go away if you don't use it. So when you, you know, start filing returns, reporting income, that starts building up your RSP contribution room. But if you're young and you're not investing money at that point in time, that room doesn't disappear. It just carries forward until you are ready to use it. So sometimes I have people coming in that have 50, 60, $70,000 of room because they've never contributed. So they have a lot of opportunity to put money in RSPs at that point in time. And so same applies for newcomers to Canada, right? You're showing up here, you start filing your tax returns, you start reporting Canadian income, and your RSP contribution room will start growing at that point in time that you can then contribute to your RSPs as well. So we talked about the initial contribution, how it saves you taxes. The other benefit of putting money in RSPs over a non-registered traditional investment would be that the income that those investments generate are tax-free while the money's in an RRSP, right? So if I have um, a bunch of money in my RSPs and it's making me $5,000 of investment income, whether that's interest, dividends, whatever it might be, uh, I do not need to pay tax on it versus if it was in an unregistered account, that $5,000 would need to be reported on my tax return and I have to be owing money to the government on a yearly basis. So it essentially allows your income, your investment to grow much quicker because it, you're not taking it, uh, you're not having a chunk taken off every year for taxes. Okay, so very important point. You get to defer the taxes um, until you're taking the money out. And that's the third part of the RSP is the withdrawal from the RSP. Because you got to write it off or deduct it on your return when you put the money in an RSP, you have to then include it as income when you take it out of the RRSP, okay? And you are paying tax on that withdrawal when you take it out of the RSP. And so oftentimes it's most beneficial for people who are contributing when they're in a higher bracket and then withdrawing it in retirement at a lower bracket. Okay, um, you can contribute and use RSP contributions until December 31st of the year you turn 71. So that's kind of the max of when you can contribute to RSPs. At that point in time, RSPs turn into what's called a RIF, with is just another acronym for the type of account it is, and you are forced to withdraw every year after that at a certain withdrawal rate, okay? But we won't go into all the details of that. You can also withdraw it before 71, uh, as long as it's not in a locked in RRSP and you would be paying tax on that withdrawal at that time. Just to recap, you put money in RRSP, you get the deduction, it grows tax free throughout uh, your, your life and then you pay tax on it when you withdraw it. And so you're getting the benefit of the deduction at whatever tax bracket you're in and you're paying tax at whatever tax bracket you're in when you take it out, okay? But either way, you're getting the deferral of taxes over time and having that grow tax-free is um, probably a bigger benefit than you, you, you think it is um, without actually doing the math, okay? Um, couple other questions to go over would be, we talked about the limit earlier on um, and how that grows every year. What happens if I over-contribute by accident? Well, luckily you have a bit of a grace uh, period where CRA allows you to contribute or over-contribute above your limit for up to $2,000 without incurring any penalties or interest. But if you go above that $2,000 um, over contribution, that's when you, you're getting in trouble. And there are penalties and interest that apply. It's, uh, as a general rule of thumb, you're paying a 1% penalty for anything over and above that $2,000 contribution. And then there's a whole other um, steps that need to be taken to uh, withdraw that money from your account pay the penalty uh, and file some, some forms that again, uh, your tax professional can help you if you go into that situation, but hopefully you're not going into that situation, okay? Um, a few other special cases to note. There is such a thing as a spousal RSP that allows you to contribute to your spouse's RRSP account and the contributor gets the deduction on their tax return and the spouse would pay tax on that money when it's withdrawn from the account in their name. 
And so it's really beneficial for spouses that are, uh, you have one spouse at a high, uh, high income earner and the other spouse with little to no income or little to no uh, investments so that the high income earner can the deduction at his or her high tax rate and the spouse would pay tax at his or her lower tax rate when they take the money out. Uh, as long as the money stays there for at least three years, you can't withdraw it within three years of putting the money in. So something to note for that. Um, other couple of small uh, or special cases that I won't go into all the details, might make a video on that later on, but home buyer's plan and lifelong learning plan. So these are special programs that the government came out with that allows you to take money out of your RRSPs without paying tax on it during the withdrawal, um, as long as it's used for specific case uh, situations. So the home buyer's plan is to buy your first house. You're allowed to take money out of your RSP tax free to buy the house up to $35,000 and they're certain with, uh, you need to pay that back a certain amount that will prevent it from being taxable. And if you don't put the money back in the RSP account, that's when you're gonna need to pay tax on it. And again, um, I'm just kind of giving you a quick overview, uh, not going to great detail for that. Same thing with the lifelong learning plan. You take, take money out for uh, post-secondary education and you can take that money out tax-free and there's gonna be um, a certain period of time where you need to put the money back into the RRSP account uh, or else you'd be subject to tax on that withdrawal. So I hope that really gives you a good overview of how our RSPs work. Next, we're gonna tackle TFSAs, which is the other registered account that you have as an option. And then we're gonna go into details of which one is better, RSPs or TFSAs, in a future video, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for listening.